943, 35 degrees on this Thursday morning. And this week in Alaska history, the new Seward Highway opens to traffic. Yeah, the year 1951. During this week's Storytime with Ann Phil, author Laurel Downing Bill gives us a history lesson on how it came to be. 65 years ago, the 125 mile stretch of the new Seward Highway officially opened to traffic. It connected to the Sterling Highway, but Laurel, as we may or may not know, this route had been used for a long time prior. Yeah, back in the 1700s, you had uh, Russians exploring around looking for furs and minerals, but long before that, you had our Alaska Native people who were in the area for thousands of years. In fact, the Denina had found abundant game in an area that we now call Beluga Point. And then in the late 1890s, you had all kinds of hopeful prospectors coming into the country after gold had been discovered around the Hope area. It didn't take long, though, for Hope and Sunrise and Girdwood to start losing their populations after that great Klondike gold rush commenced. But people did start filling and coming into areas around, um, say, Cooper Landing and the Kenai Peninsula because of the big game as well as all the good fishing down there. So eventually the federal government would look to improve its, its roadways and this one being one of them. Yeah, when they started, you know, the uh, Alaska Railroad in 1915 to connect to interior Alaska, um, that was completed in 1923. Well, that same year, they plowed a road that went from Seward to the Kenai Lake. And then in 1928, another road that connected Hope to Moose Pass was put in. And my mom, I can remember her telling me stories, she grew up in Hope, of using that roadway to get to Moose Pass for the dances. That was a big deal then. Well, tracking out miles and miles of road is one thing, but we'd also need a few bridges to help us, well, bridge the gaps. <laughs> That's right. Bridges were a necessity, and they completed the 18-mile bridge, which was called the Missing Link, in 1946, and then started in on the road connecting Homer to the Turn Lake Junction. And that was 138 miles, and that was completed in 1950. In fact, then governor of the territory, Ernest Gruning, cut a ribbon in September 1950 to open up the Sterling Highway. Which takes us full circle now back to 1951, the new Seward Highway officially opened to traffic. It opened on October 19th, 1951, and that was the first time that people from Seward and from the Kenai Peninsula could access Anchorage by road system. Now the road's been serving us well, it was paved the following year, but then of course 1964, the great earthquake, it kind of took a, uh, destroyed some portions of the road that had to be raised and repaired along with bridges along the way. But as you can see, this is absolutely gorgeous with all the wildlife and the wildflowers that we get to see. Yeah, not only is it a very practical roadway getting us from A to B, it is also extremely scenic. In fact, one of the most scenic in all of the United States and let's be honest, number one in our hearts. Number one in my heart growing up down there. I've probably mm -hmm. driven that highway more than 100 times. Beautiful drive on that day. Beautiful in the summer, which also makes me think maybe one day they'll find a way to expand it. Uh -huh. just, to, just to ease some of the summer traffic. The congestion. Usually just on a Sunday, though. But uh, yeah. yeah, had a fun one doing that story next week. How the thriving community of Kinnick came to be in the early 1900s and then why it quickly disappeared just 13 years later. Interesting stuff. Yeah.